So, welcome everybody. Um, I just want to introduce you to a book today that I've uh, just finished reading over Christmas, Christmas 2016, and it's called uh, A Farewell to Ice, uh, A Report from the Arctic by Peter Wadhams. And uh, I felt, felt compelled to uh, share this information because I think what's contained in this book is very, very important information that everybody on this planet right now should know about and know about the seriousness of the message that uh, Peter Wadhams is trying to uh, convey to us in this very scientific, very rational, very calm, sober assessment of the perilous situation that we find ourselves in vis-a-vis -vis global warming. I've been reading this sort of information on global warming since the late 1980s when James Hansen, I think, was the first piece of literature I, I, I um, read on global warming. And I think he's, I think it was called Towards a Warmer World. And I just picked it up in the geography department in UCC. In a, at a, it was about 1988-89, there, thereabouts. And I read this stuff on global warming and I thought that was my awakening to the effect or the impact of uh, our species, mankind, humankind, on the living world, on the planet, on nature. I'd been very aware of, of the impacts we were having at a local level, but uh, I was this was awakening up to our total impact on the biosphere, if you like. Um, so I'd just like to read from the foreword uh, to this book by Walter Monk, and I think it, it, it sums up the book uh, very, very well. Uh, Walter Monk, he's with the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at La Jolla, California. Peter Wadhams, Peter Wadhams has been a polar researcher for 47 years, during which time he has observed and measured major changes in the nature of sea ice cover in the polar regions. In this book, he first gives a brief, brief review of the planet and the development of its ice on land and sea. He goes on to describe the profound transformations that he has witnessed during his career. The area of Arctic sea ice in summer has dwindled from more than 8 million square kilometres to less than half that, leading to projections for the imminent occurrence of ice-free summers in the Arctic. The melting of sea ice is not just a curious phenomenon in a remote part of our world. It sharply decreases the amount of solar radiation reflected back into space, from 60% to 10. One-sixth the amount that's been reflected back out and, and that obviously is going to have a serious impact on the heating of the planet and global warming. Uh, further accelerating the planetary warming cycle. Frozen sediments which have lain undisturbed since the last ice age are now releasing plumes of methane, a very potent greenhouse gas, up to 23 times more potent than carbon dioxide, which we hear a lot of talk about carbon dioxide, not so much talk about methane. Uh, obviously, methane is a byproduct as well of the agricultural uh, industry, uh, ruminant cattle, um, belching cattle, not farting cattle, but, uh, bel belching cattle produce huge amounts of methane, and the Irish agricultural system is responsible for a huge amount of that as well, uh, per capita. A farewell to ice is both an authoritative report of the state of the Arctic today and a timely reminder of the global threat posed by the loss of a sea ice. It's a call to arms. Uh, I think it's a desperate cry to wake to wake a world up, uh, to wake it out of its slumber, uh, to the havoc that we're, we're wreaking on the natural world. When you, when you remove Arctic sea ice, uh, in the Arctic it's sea ice, so it's floating on the water. In the Antarctic it's on top of land. On Greenland it's on top of land. Um, when you remove that white covering on the planet, soil, like grass, or peaty soils, or even just soil, if you look at a ploughed field, that's brown or dark, that absorbs a lot more energy. So that's a positive feedback loop there, that you hear a lot of talk about positive feedback loops. So warming melts the ice. Further warming is absorbed then by the, the darker soils which are exposed when the ice is, is removed. Um, two of the things he talks about as well is the, um, the tundra in Siberia. Um, where the melting is taking place as well. So this, and what is contained in the tundra is organic material, which is now really beginning to release huge plumes of uh, methane gas. Again, I referred to earlier on as being 23 times more warming than CO2, which is the main, is the main uh, global warming gas. Without CO2 in the atmosphere, we wouldn't be able to live on this planet because it's what actually retains, one of the gases that helps us retain heat on this planet. A pre-industrial level, uh, was about 280 parts per million carbon dioxide 
Last year, 2016, we exceeded for the first time in modern history, in recent history, uh, 400 parts per million carbon dioxide. Now I want to talk about what I refer to as uh, the silence. To be fair to RT, they've done, you know, even in the last week, we're now in the first week of January 2017, they've done very good coverage on the health service, they've done very good coverage on homelessness, they've done very good co coverage on other current social issues and, and economic issues, which are very important. And I think there's been some very good debate um, chaired by RT, but there's been an absolute and utter silence on this issue. I think a lot of people are going more and more to the so-called alternative media and what the reason this is happening I believe in my own case is what I would refer to as the wall of silence. I don't want to call it a conspiracy of silence but it's definitely a wall of silence and particularly when it comes to environmental matters. Um, the matters that keep me awake at night that exercise my mind every, wake, every waking hour, the things that I worry about, the things that I think, you know, will we have a planet worth living on in 50 years' time? Will the next generation and the generation after that, which is not far away, it's a blink of an eye in, in time, um, we now need to be doing something about it. In fact, we probably needed to do something about it 50 years ago.